Hey guys, what's up? Bo Liddell here with ImagesByBolin.com. Welcome to part 6 of my video series on exposure blending. In this video I'm going to build off of the previous one in part 5 where I demonstrated the use of the quick selection tool and show you how to achieve selections for creating blending masks using what's known as the magic wand tool. This tool often works better than the quick selection tool, although not always, and enables more complex selections overall. Probably the main reason why it bears the name that it does. But it can also require more experimentation as well as additional cleanup steps compared to the quick selection tool before the selection or mask is ready to be applied to exposures you want to blend. So let's check it out. Okay, so here we are back in Photoshop. You'll recognize this Badlands photo from the previous video. And the magic wand tool, you'll notice, is located right up here in the same location that the quick selection tool was. It's basically the big brother uh, to that tool. It's located under this drop-down button. Uh, again, you can use W to toggle to it. And uh, as I mentioned, it is a more sophisticated tool than the quick selection tool, so it enables more complicated selections. But we can use it under the same conditions that we use the quick selection tool uh, to select more... Uh, simply defined edges such as a horizon like this. And you'll notice when you select the tool that you'll have options up here in the left for um, either a new selection, adding to a selection, uh, subtracting, um, and taking the difference of selection. You can choose your sampling point. I almost keep always keep it on a point sample versus averaging. The tolerance is something you can keep down low or high. I'll show that in a minute. Uh, Anti-aliasing I always leave on because it creates more of a natural feather. Uh, the quick or the magic wand tool tends to create fairly hard uh, boundaries and you do want to feather it just ever so slightly so that's kind of an automated uh, feathering uh, process. And then uh, you can uh, choose to select just portions of an image that are more or less contiguous to one another or a larger portion of the overall um, photo. So if I try and uh, use that tool here on my lower layer, you can see that it's, it's done a good job of selecting maybe some darker blue tones, but not much else. Um, and they are discontiguous with one another. I can then uh, increase that tolerance up to maybe you know 20 or 30 or so and you can see it selects a much larger region and then um, just as we could do with the quick selection tool we can continue to add to this selection um, generally speaking you're not going to drag it across the sky like you will with the quick selection tool but you're going to select a point and then press shift or add uh, click the button up here for uh, add to the selection and then just continue to click in the areas that uh, you know you want to select and you can see here it appears as though it selected everything um, in the uh, sky although it's selecting a few pixels down here in the foreground too if I were to increase that tolerance even more and select um, the sky you can see it continues to select more of the tones in the rest of the image. So if I look at a mask that I created with that, you can see that um, there's a lot of stuff that we don't want selected here. So there'll be a fair amount of cleanup involved uh, using the magic wand tool. And the more complicated your photo is and your edges are that you need to select, um, that's going to be a common theme that'll run throughout using this particular tool. If I select the contiguous button though and then click on this, then uh, it's going to do a much better job of avoiding those areas that are outside of the um, edge that you want to select. So I can, for example, uh, create a mask out of that and here's the result. Um, it's actually a pretty decent boundary. And I don't have any stray pixels uh, to have to worry about. Uh, up in the sky or that weren't selected or pixels that were selected where they weren't supposed to be down in the foreground. And you can see here that there's some issues. You know, there's clearly a part right here that the tool didn't do the best job of selecting. So if I reload that selection and go back to the photo so we can look at it, just as I did with the quick selection tool, I can combine the magic wand with the quick selection tool and 
add to this selection in a more refined way rather than simply clicking where you don't have as much control over what pixels it's going to select I can now use the quick selection tool to just simply uh, you know brush in and add or in this case I want to deselect some of this foreground and you can see how I'm pushing it back towards the edge. It's then going to recalculate and refine an edge. You can see I have a spot up here, so I can do that again. And it's going to move that selection and recalculate. And uh, so in that way, I can continue to refine my selections. Again, I can do this with the quick selection tool as well, and using these two tools in combination. So let me just deselect that for right now. Um, if you don't do the best job of selecting uh, pixels uh, on one side or the other of your boundary, then uh, you need to pixel peep, zoom in, and determine if there's any pixels that need to be brushed out using the normal brush mode on the mask or use that overlay brushing technique that I showed you in part four when demonstrating how to use luminosity edge selection masks. And so uh, here's my top layer with the masks uh, applied. And if I zoom in, to 100% here and we toggle back and forth between a quick selection version and in this case the magic wand tool and look at the edge you can see if you train your eye right around here as I toggle that there is a very slight difference there's the magic wand there's the quick selection tool. In this case, the quick selection tool probably did perform a little bit better. And the reason why is that if we look at the selection or the mask for the magic wand, it's pretty hard. It almost looks a little pixelated. If we go to the quick selection tool, it's a little bit smoother. Um, so, you know, both of these blends are really pretty good. Um, they're more than sufficient unless you're going to really blow them up. And what little bit of artifacts you can see in the Magic Wand version, we can easily correct for those. And I'm going to show you how to do that in Part 7 of this video series. Okay, so we've seen this particular photo many times. And we can use the Magic Wand tool very well here. This is a little more complicated uh, boundary. We saw how the quick selection tool did not do a good job of selecting uh, this ridge across here, but in particular around the trees. And this is where the magic wand tool is going to do a far better job. So if I try and make my selection here, you can see that I've got it set to contiguous, so I'm having the same issues that I did with the quick selection tool uh, to a certain extent. So in this case I'm going to want to turn that contiguous box off. My tolerance I'm probably going to want to still have fairly high between 25 and you know maybe 40 or so. Um, so let's deselect that and start over and uh, you can see now that it's selecting uh, a good portion of the image and in this case we we've really got to do that because we need to select those pixels that are behind the tree uh, if we don't do that, we're just not going to get a good selection to start with. The problem, as you can see, is that we're selecting pixels elsewhere in the photo. Now, if we go ahead and see what that looks like in the mask, I'm just going to go ahead and hide the marching ants. Uh, yeah, we're going to have to use some tools or techniques that I've previously demonstrated to clean this mask up. But we also haven't deselected enough of the volcano, so we still have some work to do. So I can go back to the layer with the, with the selection still active and then start adding more to that. So now I've essentially added all of the really light um, highlights and snow fields and the glacier and the mountain. If I go to that particular selection, this is what that mask would look like. Uh, we've really honed in on that boundary that we want and around the tree, but still uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on in the foreground that we're still going to need to clean up. Some of it we can retain, such as the snow fields, uh, and we have some issues with the volcano. Some of that we want to select, some of it we don't. So there's still a lot of work to do with this. Um, if I continue to work on that edge I can create this uh, particular mask and if I apply that particular selection let's go ahead and 
delete that mask. We're going to find our magic wand selection, edge selection. And load that as a mask. Now you can see we get a pretty good end result. Um, we have a pretty, no, at least for at this scale, we have no real noticeable artifacts. If I zoom into 100% and we scrutinize this boundary, you can see that as with the quick selection tool, um, there are a few minor artifacts here, but this performs much better on this portion of the mask than did the quick selection tool. Um, but there's some other areas where it didn't. Uh, it's probably a little bit worse in this portion uh, of the, let me use my hand tool, of this portion of the ridge line than it did with the quick selection tool. Um, there's some hard edges up around here. Um, this is really looking pretty good until we get in here. There's some very definite uh, art edge artifacts. And um, it did pretty good around the tree, uh, although uh, you might not be able to see on your TV monitor, but there are some very slight edge artifacts around the tree here. Uh, again, we can correct for almost all of those edge artifacts pretty easily. Um, if, as long as we've done a good job of doing initial selections in the first place, we're going to be able to correct for more of those, and I'm going to, or for most, if not all of those. And I can show you how to do that in part seven. Uh, there's still some issues with this particular blend, as I showed uh, when we used luminosity selections, which are the best way to do this blend. Uh, we're going to have to deal with the snow fields because they're blown out and the darks in the volcano. So we need to fix those and um, probably going to do those with luminosity selections. Um, but nevertheless, we can get a, still a fairly decent result, uh, better than the quick selection tool because it handles the tree better, but there's still some edge artifacts that need to be dealt with. Now here's an example of where we're going to really have some challenges with the magic wand tool. Sometimes it'll handle these types of selections pretty well. Um, it just all depends on the image. In this particular case, it uh, it doesn't. And so I have three images. This is the baseline. It's really well. It's one photo that was processed three times. This photo here was processed for the dark trees to open up the shadows, and this particular photo was processed to maximize the contrast and get uh, the color and highlights out of the foreground. And if I go ahead and use the magic wand tool to start uh, making selections, of course, I, I need to have a discontiguous uh, selection, so don't want to check the contiguous box. And my tolerance probably needs to be fairly high like it is here in the 40s. And now I need to continue to add to this selection. And you can see that there are areas that are not selected. So I have to continue to add to those uh, and scrutinize the mask uh, to make sure that areas uh, that should be selected are selected. And I can pixel peep as best I can uh, with these marching ants to try and get as many of them as possible. You can see there's quite a few in around here. Uh, and so I'm going to continue to go through and do that. And, you know, this is, there's a few little branches here and there that it appears to have missed. Um, you know, on the surface it looks like it's done a a pretty decent job here. Uh, you can see though that it is selecting some areas that we aren't necessarily going to want to have selected or if we mask those out using one of the other images then you know no harm done. But um, we're definitely going to have to scrutinize uh, this particular mask. And so I've done that here. And here's our magic wand selection. You can see that it selects a fair amount of the foreground. Again, we're not too worried about this stuff. We're going to be able to mask that out. But what we're really worried about are all of these edges. And as I zoom in on those edges, you can tell by how the pixels are being selected whether or not there may be some issues. And right here in particular, you can see that there's partially selected pixels, there's gray, there's black. Um, they're not blended or feathered real well, so that's kind of a tip-off that we may have a lot of edge artifacts. And indeed, uh, we do. So if I apply that particular mask, To our middle layer here, 
at this level, it doesn't look half bad. But as we start to get in, and you know what we call pixel peep, it's going to be really hard to see on your monitor. But in these locations right here, there's a lot of edge artifacts going on, and it's having difficulty blending in the darker layer and the lighter layer. As I scroll over here, you'll see there's even more artifacts occurring here, and it's really bad and noticeable in places like this. Okay, so we can use this mask and use overlay brushing techniques to try and further hone uh, this mask. And I did that with this altered magic wand uh, mask where um, I used that technique and I also removed all of the pixels that were partially um, you know, deselected in the foreground there. I'm going to load that and apply it and we'll just zoom into a hundred percent again and you can see that while it's doing a better job in some areas we still have over significant portions of the image and including in those same areas we still have a lot of these edge artifacts so we're gonna have to look for some better methods to blend this image um, and I will be revisiting this in part seven to show you a different auto selection method. Uh, so that'll bring today's video to a close. I hope you've learned something that you can use to blend your own photos. If you have any questions, you can visit my webpage or send me an email at the links shown in the more info section below this video. And I'd be happy, happy to answer any questions you might have. Stay tuned for part seven in this series where I'll introduce you to yet another sophisticated auto selection tool that enables complex selections. And I'll show you how to correct most of the edge artifacts generated with all of the auto selection approaches, provided that you've done a decent job on the initial selection to begin with. All right. Happy shooting, guys.